Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Hello and welcome to our final of this season, Thursday afternoon family puppet craft series. Uh, I'm Shoshana from Sandglass and I'm here with Yana, zooming in from her kitchen, her beautiful kitchen. Um, and today's project, if you saw the little ad, is a shadow theater. A homemade shadow theater made from an old cereal box. And I'll show you the little demo. I'm going to grab just my little light here so you can see what this looks like. This is something you can do even with a candle. Um, it's a great project to do for the night. But you can see, even with just a little bed light, what, what sound does a moose make? I don't know what sound a moose makes. <laughs> I'm not sure. Moose. <laughs> so there's our little theater. So that's what we're going to make today. And um, if you already want to be thinking a little bit about what scene you want to create or a fairy tale you want to create or a song or a story, um, I find that very helpful inspiration. So let's go over our materials and what we need. I have a Honey Nut Cheerios cereal box. Yana, what cereal do you have? I have a, I have a chocolate cream um, cookie box. Oh, that works too. Perfect. It's a, little, it's a little smaller than yours, but I'll just make a smaller theater. Great. So, object number one, cookie box. Then we need our paper. And I have some thin sketching paper or tracing paper that we use to cover tables for art projects. But it's actually lovely and translucent when you hold it up to the light. What kind of paper are you using, Yana? I found some old-fashioned typewriter paper, and it's a little bit translucent. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, it is nice. It was on my shelf of papers. You could typewrite once upon a time along the top of it. <laughs> I also have masking tape. That's our friend for quick and dirty puppet building. Um, and I have some wire. And I already cut mine to size because I'm not at home. So um, if you, have an, you don't have pre-cut ones, of course, you need little wire cutters to cut them. They're about as long as the palm of my hand. And these are aluminum wire. Doesn't really matter. I also have a little straight edge that's going to help me to draw some straight lines for my theater. I have, of course, my trusty scissors. And I have a little wire bender that I'm going to be using. And I have a pencil because I like to sketch out what I'm going to draw first. So, you got all your materials, Yana? I do. I'm just counting it out. I, I didn't grab wire. I have a chopstick. So, and I'll see how that works. If not, I'll go get some wire. Great. Yes, mm -hmm. like every week, we encourage you to take our guidelines and improvise with them. Kind of go on your own trajectory of what's uh, working for you. Oh, I'm just going to pop on to Sandglass Theaters Live here on my phone so that if you have any questions or comments, you can interact with us. We will see your comments come in and can, um, can answer them for you. Let's see, w maybe you're streaming from Fact TV. That's fine as well. And if you do want to interact, just go on our Facebook page, Sandglass Theater, and you can find the live video streaming now. It will also be up for a while. So if questions come up later, ask them. We'll answer you then too. All right. So, let's get started. I hope
hope you all have a cereal box. I love the, the range of boxes people bring to these kind of projects. This was a, uh, this one says always organic at the top, which I really oh, love. Nice. I didn't paint these. You could paint your box, but there's something charming to me about leaving the cereal box as it is. And when the light's behind it, you don't really see this part anyway. So it, it's just for aesthetics if you want to paint yours. So I'm going to begin actually by taking apart my box a little bit. I'm going to open the side that is not yet open. Oh, bonjour, Erin Khan, here all the way from Paris. Nice uh, to see you. Thanks. And Kirk Thank Murphy. Oh, we have some friends with us. Makes me very happy. So I'm going to choose one side to use as the front of my proscenium theater and one side to cut off. So I'm actually going to use this one because it's more, a little more neutral. And I'm going to cut off just this back section. So I want to leave the edges connected to the front part, and I'm going to cut off just the square of the back. Again, as I said last time, I'm not terribly precise when I build these kind of things. It's a lot of uh, <laughs> eyeballing on my part, and I'm just generally cutting along that crease. I'm not too worried about perfection, but if you are, that's great too. Okay, so I've cut one and I'm gonna cut, remember I'm gonna leave that box edge, but I'm gonna cut off the back, in which case it's the front right now of the box, but it'll be my theater back. I'm actually going to save this because I'm going to use this back piece to become my characters, like my moose, for inside the shadow theater. So I want to keep this as little waste as possible. Oh, hi, Jenna. Nice to see you, too. Now, I want to draw the proscenium that I'm going to cut. So you'll see here that is not cutting flush up against the side of the box, right? My square is a little bit in, so it becomes like a TV screen almost, right? Like a little screen in here. So you can measure out however much you want. If you want a thin rim or if you want a thicker rim. I like a little more of a substantial rim because these are just cereal boxes, so that gives it a little more structural integrity. And I do this really simply. I just take my straight edge and I just draw down the width of that from every crease. So you could get much more specific than that. But that's how I'm going to do it today. So I'm going to fold this up, just push my straight edge against it, and make a line where that width is. I'll do the same on the sides. I'm even just using the cutout cereal box as my straight edge. I mean, the cut my cutout cookie box. Oh, that's a good idea. My line probably isn't straight enough to do that with, but <laughs> Jan is more precise than I am. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm also I I am part of that family of more eyeballing. I definitely like that. Yeah, like eyeballing. So now you see, well, it's not very dark, so I hope you can see that there is a square penciled in the middle of my box. Yeah. And I am going to, of course, if you have a exacto knife and a surface to cut on, you could get a really nice clean cut with that. I just have my scissors today. So I'm going to poke a hole in the center of this box and then kind of cut out to the rim carefully so that I don't stab my own fingers but I'm gonna poke through and then just begin to cut out and when I get to the edge I can get more specific and careful Josh what can you think of a favorite shadow puppet show that you've seen Oh gosh, we used to have this absolutely beautiful, well we still have it, it's on 
VHS. It's a beautiful recording of, do you remember, Yana? We watched it as children. A prince. Oh, Prince Ahmed. Prince Ahmed. Yeah, uh, Lotte, Lotte Reiniger, or what yes, is her name? Yes, that is her name. She made these intricate, gorgeous shadow scenes and puppets. And uh, yeah, I grew up with that video as something I watched as oh, a kid. Oh, you're right, George. That is amazing. And then our mother made a whole shadow piece of, of the nativity for, we used to do something called the almost Victorian Christmas. And she made this intricate uh, shadow play with all these scenes and she would drop in the different ornate scenes and do the shadow play with Finn Campman. And gosh, they were, those were really fun. And yeah, beautiful. magical. Magical. Shadow puppets, there's so much you can do with shadow puppets. And we're just doing a very simple shadow puppet project today. But of course, you can do shadow puppets with your full body. You can make hand shadow puppets, right? You can play with light and a screen in so many different ways. This is a kind of miniature, simplified thing that is really fun for small stories and for kids and parents and families to make together. Um, but of course, the world of shadows is huge. Oh, we have so many more people joining us. Oh, nice. Bonjour from Lincoln, Vermont. Amelia Tuttle is here. Oh, this is so beautiful. Andrew Pinard, wonderful. We're so happy you're all with us. I hope okay. you're all pulling out your old cereal boxes and joining in the fun. So now I'm talking a lot, so it's taking me a lot of time to cut out this square. I'm going to focus a little more. Yana, tell me about... I think, um, for me, well, as you were mentioning in that video, uh, Prince Ahmed, that's where shadow puppetry kind of um, started going almost into animation. And what's one of the amazing things about shadow puppetry is you can get really, really strong precision, precision but then you can also pull the shadow away from the screen and make the image blurry, which makes it really mysterious. And um, so it's a, it's a really interesting medium, shadow puppetry. Of course, it has long traditions in many countries. In Southeast Asia, for instance, oh, shadow puppetry goes back oh my God, thousands of years. Wasn't it used to entertain the courts in China? Was, was that something where it, be, where it began? And then some people think that shadow puppetry followed the Silk Road and made its way down to Turkey and um, south yeah, of Asia. Too. And that's mm -hmm. where you have those beautiful... Sangras did a collaboration with a company from Cambodia once, and um, they were dancers and shadow puppeteers, and they had these gigantic shadow puppet scenes, but you could see their whole bodies behind the screen as they animated. Yana actually went to Cambodia and got to work with them and handle these puppets. How was that, Yana? Oh, it, so yeah, that style is interesting because of course the kind of shadow puppets I was knowing was very kind of sm more small. And these puppets, they are actually so big that they are very physical for the performer. The performer actually almost becomes it's almost like a dance so i definitely got to try that out uh which was crazy um and i have yeah amazing memories of that you kind of lean your body into the shadow screen with the entire puppet and sometimes the performers come out and they slap those big shadows against each other it's very dramatic very physical really expressive Shoshi, what are we doing next with our box? So I'm going to pull out now my um, semi-translucent, my light paper of whatever variety I have. And I'm going to place it on my table and put down my square on top of it. And I'm just going to gently trace with the pencil where that square is. And I want to make sure to not be right up against the edge of my paper because I want to be able to overlap it a little bit with the rim of my stage. So I'm going to make sure I'm not directly on the edge. 
And then I'm just gonna trace out that square pretty light and gently. So now I have that square traced on my other paper. And again, this is a moment where I am not terribly precise, but I'm going to cut out a little bit wider than that square that I just made. So maybe like a thumb's width wider outside of that square. And a straight line is not terribly important. You want to be relatively straight, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to tape over it. So I'm going to cut out like maybe a half an inch wider than that square that I just made. Here we go. Always so interesting. I, to be honest, I'm not sure that I've ever built a little shadow puppet theater. So um, it's just always so interesting in how too many, in, into how many little steps the process breaks down into. Yeah. And that's a lot what puppetry is all about, the building and inventing. Of course, there's so many ways to do it. We just offer one way that we've experimented with or just done on our own and figured out one way. And I'm sure there's lots of ways that this works for people. And lots of ways people teach this. Sarah Nolan uh, once came to San Fras two, two Winter Sunshine series ago, or maybe three and she brought a shadow puppet workshop and she built her shadow puppet theater out of a big pizza box, a recycled pizza box. Yeah. That's so a nice way. I think honestly that was probably a little bit of the inspiration for this. But <laughs> I didn't have a pizza box, so I used a cereal box. So I now have my paper cut a little bit wider and bigger than my frame. And I'm going to place that down on my frame on the back side, right? So if this is the front, let's see if you can see, right? I'm actually working on the back side and placing that. And if I want to be really specific, remember how I traced that pencil line all the way around? I'm actually going to make sure that pencil line is facing back as well so you don't see it on the other side. And I can line it up with that same box. Now I'm sure you know what's next. I'm going to use my masking tape to secure that into place. Now I wanna be really careful that it's nicely taut. It isn't slack and there's no creases in it because that's our shadow screen now. But I also wanna be careful not to rip my paper. If I do, I can just make another one. So let's see. Finding the beginning of the tape is always a challenge. Today I decided to use white glue for this, for gluing the little screen on. Because um, I'm finding my box is just a little flimsy and I'm hoping that the white glue will kind of help it to make a tighter fit with this screen. So mm. it's going pretty well. Great. That's also a good option. I'm starting on one end to secure the paper right where I want it. And then I'm going to work my way down to the other edge so that it's nicely stretched by the time I get to the other edge. It doesn't really matter to do it all in one piece of tape. It doesn't matter because, um, of course, this will all be hidden on the other side. So. And the nice thing about masking tape is you can always kind of pull it up again gently if it's not quite right. Great. Continuing down the edge. I'm going to go on the other side. So again, Yana is working with white glue to tape hers down. And I'm just giving it the good old masking tape rim. Pull the other side nice and straight. I think we've used masking tape in almost 
every project we've done so far. <laughs> That's true. How many times have we have we done this little workshop now, Shoshi? Is this our fifth, sixth? Well, we did. We started with those little um, winter sunshine template puppets. The little finger, yeah, where our fingers became legs too. That. Then um, Easter, we made Easter egg puppet heads mm -hmm. or characters, Easter egg characters. We've done finger puppets. Finger puppets, tape guys. Tape guys. Ines did two special workshops with us. She made paper wow. bag masks with us and a three string marionette. Yes, and we have, so that makes it six. Last week we did those little Jack in a Cup puppets. Seven. I think today is our eighth class exactly. Wow. We've been doing this now for three months, I think. So I am just about done with my round, full ah, covering of masking tape. So now I have my shadow screen. And you can already see it if you hold it up to a light source. And I'll show you with the lamp later. But it already, if you hold whatever you're working on right up to the window, you'll probably be able to see. You can already create, let's see if I remember any hints. It's my wolf. <laughs> Howling wolf. So, if you've done that step, our next step is going to be to make our box back into a box. Well, a half a box anyway. So the nice thing about cereal boxes is they already have these little tabs, right? These ones here. So if you are gluing, you can just glue those tabs back as they were when you opened the box. And if you're taping, you can just fold the box to where you want it and tape over the edge. So I'm gonna fold this one up, whoop, and I'm gonna tape down the corner. Are you gonna glue your corners or tape them, Yana? Now I'm taping them, actually. I feel good about the screen. I like the taping for the frame because it it's going to give it a little bit sturdiness around the corners. That's good. Okay, and we just want to work around and do every corner. So, if you're out there building, let us know how it's going by commenting on the Facebook page or on the Facebook live video. And if you have any questions, you can post them there. Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about what Sandclass is up to right now? Sure. We have a lot of um, exciting things planned for the summer, actually. Um, so if, if you're not on our mailing list, if you go to sandglasstheater.org, you can find the link to join our mailing list and you'll get all the notifications directly into your inbox of what we're planning, what we're working on, and opportunities to um, engage for both adults and for children. We also do on our Facebook uh, weekly art bursts. So those are just little moments and videos from different sand glass projects and events or just videos from artists to contribute to your spirit for the day. Um, so, so that's really good to follow our Facebook page because a lot goes through there. All these videos that we've done of these workshops are on that Facebook page as well. So if you want to go back and do past workshops, you can do them there. Um, the art bursts are also on our YouTube channel. You can find them there. We also have videos for rent of, of archival shows that aren't being performed anymore both for children and for adults. And those are on our Vimeo page, Vimeo On Demand. So you can rent them and watch them for a very low fee. And um, over the summer, we're actually going to be doing a whole project 
of many different videos in the different eras of Sandglass. So that'll be something really cool to engage with, to see the old videos of where Sandglass started and how they develop and the collaborations we've done, including that uh, shadow puppet one that Yana worked on in Cambodia that we were talking about. Oh yeah, the story of the dog. Yes, that will be there. Wow, Shoshin, that's amazing. Nice work that you guys got all this digital, you know, material ready for this difficult era. Yeah, we're working on it. There'll yeah, also be a workshop for adults to participate in. So if you're passionate about, you want to build a puppet under the uh, expert guidance of Ina Zeller-Bass, you can do that this summer because we cannot have our usual summer training that we have. So I've now finished my box, my shadow puppet box, and it stands all on its own. If I want to make it really secure, I could put a little weight on the back of it so that it's not going to tip. So when you start to play in it, you can think about just placing something back there so it stays, it doesn't tip over. You got yours done, Yana? I do. I've, I noticed that one of the sides is much more sturdy than the other, so this will be my bottom. Oh, that's good. Let me try my mm -hmm. other side. Yeah. That's it's something to do with the way I taped it. You could also, if you're interested in making a, a vertical story, maybe someone going down a well, right? You could use it in this way. So lots of... Wait, wait, wait. What? Well, I could use... Do you see? I could use it vertically instead of horizontally. Oh, I see. If Because so, somebody wants to climb down deep so they can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Or if my story happens on stairs or on a ladder or um, on the side of a building. Maybe Spider-Man is going up and down the building. Whatever it is, I can uh, decide which orientation my story should have. So now I get to think about my story. Maybe you've been thinking about it as we go along. And the first thing we're going to add is some set pieces. So you'll see in this one, and I'll turn it around so you can see it from the back, I added a house, oh, it's reversed, on this side, and I added a tree on this side. And because they're um, set pieces, right, they're stationary pieces, for this little story that is only one story and I'm not switching out different sets, I just taped them along the side, right? So I made them a little bit bigger than my screen so I could tape them here and tape them here. So this story now, let's see, I'm going to use the remnants of my cereal box. And I think I'm going to make a castle on one side. I'm thinking of a story, it's a fairy tale, and I don't quite remember the whole thing, but it's a fairy tale of seven brothers I think they may have been princes, or maybe they were just brothers who turned into swans. Oh, yes. Or maybe I'm confusing it with another one that happens with a princess that turns into a swan. So I'm just well, she gets kidnapped, I think. What was that? We actually worked on the show, Shoshi. You and I, we went over to Keen to teach a shadow puppet workshop for these people. At Moco Arts, right? Yes. And they had, they actually were working with pieces that they actually attached to themselves and they themselves were the shadows, the actors. Yeah, that was a fun workshop. That fairy tale. I think I'm still inspired by it. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recreate that one a little bit. Um, in my, my story, if, I don't know if it's quite right, but I'm going to do it this way, that, it, that it's a prince turning into a swan. So I'm going to make a castle for this side of my set. And I do want to be conscious of how big it is, right? What's the scale of it? Is it in the foreground or in the background? Um, because when I put it in, right, I only see this length, this much of it. So I'm kind of going to notate that approximate length on my piece of paper as I draw it in on my cardboard. 
Um, and remember, I want to leave some on the side or on the bottom or both so that I can tape those securely into place. So, castle. And I could also sketch it out first on my, my little sketch paper. Or I can sketch it out on this because you won't see it because it will be in shadow. But let's see, I think we need a swooping tower. Do you have an idea what you're going to make, Yana? I am, I, could, I couldn't think of a story, so I'm just going to make a little, an animation of, a, of an image I see in my mind, and which is just a little island and uh, with just a couple of palm trees on it. And then a ship is going to come from behind it and ride across Ooh. the screen. That's the image I have in mind. So I'm just, right now I'm just working on cutting out uh, the palm trees for my magical island. And then I'm going to glue that in, I'm going to tape that right into place. Because uh, it's just going to be like a one image thing. In one of my shows, I made um, shadows, and I actually had a, I was able to draw some of the silhouettes onto a piece of acetate, a clear piece of plastic, and pull it across the overhead projector, and it animated the image on our screen. Yeah, that's a nice technique. Really, an amazing effect, and you don't need that many materials to create something pretty uh, magical. It becomes kind of like a shadow cranky. Yeah. I exactly. also did that. It's a rolling once. scroll. Uh oh. Cutting out my castle. Of course, because we're not reinforcing this with too much else than the paper today, you don't want to have too intricate details that will become kind of weak and fall away from the screen. So keep that in mind. Nice, bold things are good right now. But I am going to draw little um, turrets, or cut out little turrets. It's nice to have at least a couple of details, isn't it, Shoshi? Yeah. Um, sometimes it can be, uh, I think Enos did this beautifully for the, the nativity show. Because every little hole that you poke into your silhouettes, the light will shine through it so you can even get really interesting designs that way. Yeah. So, I'm making my turrets. Of course, if you have, if you're working with an X-Acto knife, you can get probably a little more detailed than with the scissors. both gone quiet into our um, yeah. building world. I, I got it. I'm making some really intricate cuts here for my feathery palm trees. So I'll show it to you. Um, actually, I'll show it to you on a piece of black. So oh, I just nice. cut out some palm trees and I'm now going to take them into the theater. Thusly, I went very quiet for a moment. I was really <laughs> concentrating. It's very bright in my kitchen. I think I'm going to have to close a curtain to even make my shadows work. Mm. I'm going to try to cut a little window into my piece here. Again, this would be easier with a knife. You have to be nice and sure, Can I see your castle? Yeah, oh. let me just finish this one video. I mean, mm. <laughs> window. <laughs> video.
Okay. So yeah, now here is my little castle. Oh, nice. Okay, a side view of the a side of it. That's nice. Right. Here it is for the. Oh yeah, we do need a little background over here. Ah, that's where we get the close. Close my kitchen curtains so that I can nice. see the shadows more. So I'm gonna look at what, how that met. Oop, this is my old one. How it measures up in my box. Oh yeah, that'll fit just nicely. And I can kind of hold it up to the light and check what it'll look like Let's before see. I tape it in. Oh yeah, that's what I want. So I'm going to tape in that piece. Let's see, Yana. I'm not sure. It's, oh, it yeah. still is very over. Can you see it at all? Um, hold that right behind. I yeah, there we go. Maybe. Okay. That's nice. I can see it. Wow. It looks like a sunset behind the palm. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. It does. I should make it more. All right. Yeah, my kitchen is still pretty bright, but it's working. <laughs> my effect is working, what I wanted. You might have to give a late night shadow performance for your yeah. family. <laughs> the late night correct version. So I'm just taping in my castle. And remember, I don't want to tape on the part that is visible in the screen. I'm taping off the screen, really to the side. So now, if I hold it at the right angle, you can see. There's my castle. And it'll be, I'm, I'm tilting it a little so I can get this light in there, but I'll show you. You'll see it better with my, um, my lamp that I brought. I'll show you in a moment. So now I want to think about the other side. And if I have a castle on one side, um, I really like these trees. Maybe I'll make the woods or a mountain with trees on it on the other side. So I'm gonna again take my paper and measure it approximate and then sketch out what I want to do. Yeah, I think I'll have some, some big mountains. And maybe I'll have some trees I'm just trying out a boat, a possible boat for that I want to do. Of course, I have to decide. It's a sailboat and what type. I'm going to make it pretty simple, simplified, so that my cutting out job doesn't get too intricate. Ooh, it's a very steep mountain I'm making here. So we'd Is love to. Is this gonna go on the other side of your stage? Yeah. Uh -huh. If I make a cut that I didn't want to make, I can always go in with tape and kind of tape over it and then it, it will hold its silhouette. So that's. One solution. Okay, so I don't know if my trees will really read as trees. Let's see, I'm going to cut some shape in. Right now, I'm just trying if I can make the masts of the ship sturdy enough with just the cardboard, but you can always go back in and reinforce the silhouettes um, with, I might, for instance, enforce my little ship mast with a match, by gluing a match on it too. Yeah, that's a really good idea. 
you want it to last. Okay, so I'm going to glue my mountains in, or tape them in rather, on the other side. And again, I'm going to hold it up to the light and choose where I want it. Oh yeah, that's good. Right there. So now you can already be thinking about your characters. Maybe it's just one character. Maybe you make a whole little cast of characters. And what size you want to make them. They could be, um, you know, if you want more of them on a small screen like this, of course, they'll have to be a little smaller. Okay. So I have both components of my set, one on each side now. Let's see if you can see that. And I'm going to move on to my swan. No problem. So let's see. And I will say for those of you that need a little inspiration, Google, if you Google silhouette or swan silhouette or horse silhouette or any kind of silhouette, there's always a lot of different options and cutouts and positions that they're taking. So that's a great way to, and even if, if you feel really not comfortable hand, drawing this by hand and kind of making it from your mind, you can print out one of those silhouettes, paste it on some sturdy cardboard, and then just cut the whole thing out. So if you want a template like that, it's a great, it's easy to find online. So I am thinking about a certain kind of swan here. Let's see if I can make it. In our family, we have a great shadow puppet theater, but it was actually printed by a company, and it's a, it's a kit, and so then you cut out these figures that are very intricate for a beautiful fairy tale where a prince and princess meet at the park at night. And I can't remember, I, I think she convinces him to kiss him and she turns into a rhinoceros and, and then she kisses him back and, and he turns in, into a swan and then he turns her into a frog and so, <laughs> It has all these incredible shadow silhouettes with <laughs> all these animals, and it's easy to do. That's an amazing thing about shadow theater, too, is you can just tell, tell a lot with just paper cutouts. Mm. You don't have to build intricate three-dimensional puppets to show a story. You don't have to build a whole big rhinoceros. You just make a cutout and get the same effect. So that's a, and that was a, a beautiful set and the box it came in looked like the box of a big board game, but then it also served as the stage. And I think I remember that set also um, was built to be done with candles, the shadow oh, puppet. Oh, it's very possible, yeah. That's, what's, that's my memory Yeah, because it. it's based in that old tradition. So that's fine too. You can use candles as your as your light source. I mean, carefully, don't set anything on fire. But that's also a beautiful way to do it. And then you get that nice little flickering effect. You can play around with shadow. There's so much you can do, even with color and and bottles with water in them, creating kind of an, a water effect in shadow. So many things to just just play around. Pin up a big sheet in your room and see what you can make and what how different things put bubble wrap in front of it and see what it looks like in front of the, the light. Um, one little tip I wanted to give for when you're cutting out intricate patterns is I find it helpful to start bigger, like cutting out the outline and then working into the details bit by bit. So you can kind of work your way into those details, especially if you're working with scissors and not an exacto knife. I've switched now to an exacto knife to I was scissoring it, but um, now I have to cut out some intricate details around the sails. Um, so I switched to a knife. I can show where I'm at. So 
So oh, I made nice. a little ship and now, well, as I was mentioning earlier, I have a chopstick for my shadow, but now my ship is so delicate that I think I will resort to a wire. So, um, excuse me for just a moment, I'm gonna go get a wire. One thing that's helpful with a wire is it can let me um, attach, and I'll show you on my moose here, attach in a way that the wire runs perpendicular to the shadow puppet, right? Like this. So if I have a chopstick, I can't really bend it right here to attach it, and it's hard to stick directly on to my moose. I'd have to hold it from the side. And since we're working in such little boxes, it's helpful to be able to actually run the wire directly back from your puppet like this. So I think it's great that Jana is going to get the chopstick now. And I'm still cutting out my swan here. I'm getting into some feathers in the wings. Again, if you're watching from home, um, please check out all the different videos on our Facebook page. Let us know if you're building along and send us pictures if you've, if you've done one of these projects and um, we'd love to see what you build and what kind of creativity comes out. We also have a little contribution link that um, if you feel so moved, we are not touring or performing at our theater right now. So um, this is our way of reaching out to our community at present. So if you feel moved to and able to make a little donation right now, we much appreciate that. See what happens when you go away, Yana, I start to talk business. What's that, yours? When you go away, I start to talk business, so you should come back. Oh yeah, okay, I'm back. Well, what I just collected was, I have decided to, um, well, attach, to make my little ship handle out of wire, so I just got the wire. I'm also going to put, um, turn my ship, uh, around and on the back side, I'm going to glue uh, match two match sticks to reinforce the masts. Oh. And now I'm going to glue them. All right, I'm getting close to finishing my little <laughs> flying. Swan, this is almost like a phoenix now. You know, it's perfectly okay if you set out to make one thing and it turns into another. That's fine too. That's kind of exciting. That often happens in, in the creation. <laughs> That's often the more exciting part. I'm gonna have to just follow what it wants to become. So yes, mine is looking a little more like a phoenix. Um, so if you can see, I'll give it a, a backing as well. You can see the, uh, the figure there. Ooh. Oh, it always goes the other way than I think it's going to go. So now I'm going to attach my wire. Um, and I like to make it nice and sturdy, make a little loop at the end. So I have these lovely pliers. And um, I'm gonna use those. If, if you don't have pliers, you might have wire that's easy enough to bend by hand. That's okay too. I'm Even gonna- a paper clip can or help paper if your theater is small. That's a good idea, paper clip works too. So I made a nice little loop at the top of my wire. And I'm just gonna take that loop and bend it so it is perpendicular, that means a right angle, to the rest of my wire. And that's the part that I'm going to tape or glue um, onto my figure. And on the other end, I'm going to loop it as well, just so I don't poke myself with this sharp edge and I have something to hold on to when I want to perform. So made a loop there. 
If you have, um, if your cardboard warps a little bit, you can also smush it in a big book for a little while, make sure it gets really flat, that helps too. Mm -hmm. Gluing, I mean taping on. And I took a nice big piece of tape so it covers everything. But of course, since the puppets are so small, the tape sticks out. So I'm now gonna cut off the tape that sticks out to finish my shadow. George, can you show me also in, on the other camera your... Yeah. Oh, nice, beautiful swan. And then you taped it on there. Got it, got it, I see it. Got it. Oops, I almost tried to cut with my pliers. That wouldn't work. So... So unless there's a um, intense demand for a certain kind of building project that we haven't done and that we didn't get to, this may be our last one of the season. Oh, you're cool. Because next week, Desi has graduation, and, yes. and we, we're going to be at that instead of building that day. Um, so... But if, if there's something we didn't do and you feel really outraged about that, let us know and, and we'll still do it. Maybe just on a different day. All right. I am ready to show you my creation. Oh, nice, George. Gonna get out my little lamp. And hold up my little box. Yeah, we can zoom right in. Maybe I'll come to this side. All right, so I have my castle, I have my mountain with the trees, and I can test my phoenix swan. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah, it's hard to focus. There we go. So one really fun thing about light is I can play with the light source, right? If I pull my phoenix back, he'll start to grow and grow and grow and get dimmer like he's, he's in the air. He's a presence, a metaphorical presence in the air, right? Or if I bring him right up against the screen, you'll see he gets smaller and smaller and more of the material world, right? So I can play with that. And if I had another character that, if I did, so we're out of time today, but if I did want to transform this bird into a human, I could pull the bird back, pull the bird back, and then flip around my creation and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and he'd turn into a, a moose? What? Okay. <laughs> well, that's all I had. <laughs> and then the moose can zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. And then I can zoom in again with my bird. Yeah. So you can already see it's a really magical kind of form. There's a lot that we can do with it. There's a lot of magical world that can be created. Yana, do you want to show yours before we end? Yeah, I'm just gonna glue the ocean in. I realized I need a little ocean. Oh. Um, I'm. To, what I'm not sure yet is to show you is that I need to both 
prop up my flashlight and manipulate and hold up the booth and manipulate my little ship. So we'll see how it goes. I'll give Maybe you have to check. hold the flashlight in your mouth. <laughs> ah! Hey, you might. Well, I was going to use my phone. Or um, call in, call in one of the boys. Um, let me see if I can get some help. Hold on. So while she goes to find one of her sons to help. Um, it's, this is, I think, our last I get one. I my stage hand to help oh, me. Oh, we have stage hands. Great. Um, let's get this flashlight. Flash. Daisy, can you hold this and the flashlight and point it at the camera? Come a little closer, Desi. There we go. Oh, now we can see it and wonderfully. Yeah. A pirate life for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, and there's a storm, and we have a whole play. <laughs> How wonderful. So Thank that was our was... little shadow puppet workshop today, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you'll let us know what you built and created and share it with your friends, share the video, tell people about Sandglass, and um, join us for future things. Stay in touch with what we're doing through our email list, our mailing list, and um, you'll hear about all, so all sorts of <laughs> summer events that we have in store for you. Thank you so much for being part of it today.